for what we just tested in that worship. Uh, when you see me taking a picture of a song on the screen, Nimeguzwa, eh, and that's exactly what has happened this morning. Those two, you know, he leaded me. Those hymns are just dangerous in the spirit. Because I think of the discipleship book, you know, it's all in my system. I, I will follow. When you declare I'm going to be a follower, you mess me up. It was very powerful. I, if I knew that, I remember that song before. It should have been in the last chapter, you know, it's just a whole song page. And saying, you sing this song as you conclude this book. <laughs> Uh, and this song before, that was another amazing, amazing song. God bless you so much. Amen. Uh, you may be seated. I read a, this scripture. <clears throat> I read a scripture in the morning that also rocked my world. In Psalms 46. Um, Verse 8 and 9. This is just, it's not part of the leadership. This is just my testimony. Uh -huh. Even preachers have testimonies. Come behold the works of the Lord. Psalms 46 verse 8. Who has made desolations in the earth. Somebody say the works of the Lord. Verse 9 is part of his works. He breaks the bow and, no, no, no. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. And he breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I'm God. I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. Verse 10. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So, when I saw the statement, he makes wars, in verse 9, seas to the ends of the earth, something jumped into my mind. How much anointing do you need to stop war? Global wars. How much anointing do you need to stop wars everywhere on the earth? Those works of God are just amazing. And if we can stop wars everywhere. You know, one morning God can just say, the war in Afghanistan finished, whatever finished, 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 finished. Just within a few seconds and the whole earth is at peace. If he has that capacity, and indeed he does, what are these little problems you're, you're, you're bothering with? That, that anointing that causes wars to seize on the earth can handle your rent. Those are small issues. Amen. So that was today's Bible study. May the Lord bless you as we get into leadership. Praise the Lord. Uh, this is, because I train leaders everywhere and I keep uh, leading and teaching and you know, doing this kind of thing everywhere. Move this here. So that I, I can hear it in front of me. Tena. Apo, sawa. I've been doing leadership everywhere. So I had this statement. I had this statement which was very amazing to me uh, a few weeks ago. That... We need to teach the young people how to enter into leadership. And um, one of the ways of entering into leadership, he said, was through service. If you can learn how to serve, then the way is open for you to get into leadership. That service or servanthood is an entry into leadership. So write that statement. Servanthood dash entry into leadership. Entry into leadership. And uh, I have exactly one hour. Today I'm not going to teach for long 
but this one hour I will not move a lot. I will try to stay here so that I can give you as much as I can <clears throat> so that I can preach in Kiambu at five o'clock. So, uh, uh, sorry for telling you the details. I, I should have told you I'm not going anywhere so that uh, you can be here. So, what did I just say? Servanthood is entry into leadership. If you are not ready to serve, the leadership utakuwa na yone ambali. Are we together? Listen, the house of God is built on service. How is the house of God built? On service or serving. <clears throat> so all leaders and workers in the church and all people that are in the body of Christ considering leadership need to realize that when we join a church we are not coming to be served as in a hotel. We actually expect everyone to accept serving in the church take a serving role because that will help you to grow that will also help you to build and maintain the house of God. Look at your neighbor say, this church is not a hotel where you are coming to be served. So you come to serve and to build the house. Because this way, it will reposition you for leadership. In fact, the prophet Haggai in chapter 1 and verse 9, when he was uh, correcting Israel, after they came back from Babylon, they were so excited. They were glad they're back home finally. They built their own houses. And they kind of, for almost 20 years, forgot that there was a house of God and an altar that needed to be built. So Haggai chapter 1 verse 9, he said, Look, you looked for much, but indeed it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why did God blow it away, says the Lord of hosts? Because of my house that is in ruins while every one of you runs to his own house. Can you see that when we neglect the house of God, then something is going to happen. What we are trying to do out there will not succeed, will be blown away. Listen, every believer must connect with the altar where they belong. Connect with the altar where you belong through service. Praise God. And the greatest challenge in this generation is self-centeredness. We really think often about ourselves. You know, many of us therefore have neglected the house of God in favor to their own house. In other words, we've neglected God's assignment in favor of our own things and our own assignment. You know, um, assignments are important. But when you begin to compare with God's assignment, this should be greater than your own assignment. Because if you take care of God's matters, then your matters will autocorrect. When you go to do your stuff, there will be grace, there will be speed, and there will be shorter time. Because first, you took care of God's stuff. Are we together? So, in Second uh, Timothy chapter 3, uh, Paul writing about the last day's problems and challenge. He said how the last day is going to be. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. He said, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Perilous times are difficult times. Difficult times. And for men, we read verse 2, will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, and thankful and holy. The list is long. Look, but there will be, number one, what? Lovers of themselves. And so one of the troubling uh, things that is happening in these troubling times is that people are lovers of themselves. Can you imagine we just concerned about ourselves, not the things of God? So in that text, in fact, if you go down to verse 5, because the list is very long, in verse 5, it says, uh, these people in the last days, 
have a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away so these people Paul is talking about actually in the church because they have a form of godliness they go to church they are involved in ministry they they are in the kingdom they are in the service uh, i mean not the service but they are among us but guess what they are lovers on themselves though they have godliness okay i hope such people are not here in Egypt who love themselves in other words they go to church so we need to change from being self-centered you know and come to being Christ centered so that Christ is the center of it all huh. I think story number one. I today I need to avoid stories. But is this story? Stories have now come. Stories have come up. One time I read, I was writing gospel tracts. You know gospel tracts? You know, those little pamphlets. Uh, there's one I wrote called, um, I think, Introducing the Man of the Hour. It's a tract we're using in the streets of Nairobi. I think I need to revive those gospel tracts. I printed thousands. So I had read a story of those days in America before there was technology, much technology, but there was radio. But radio was kind of the greatest tool of communication. It still is, by the way. Radio is still more powerful than television. And there was a man who had a guitar his musical instrument and how many of you know who play guitar that you for you to tune the guitar i think you need the sound from another guitar i hope it is still there our technology maybe has changed stuff but the old ten days for you to tune the guitar you need to hear sound then you can tune this one is that correct sir uh, and that has not changed eh? now oh there's an app <laughs> jesus but it still gives you the sound so this old man his instrument went out of tune and he was wondering how do i tune this thing because there's no other instrument so he scratched his head for a couple of days then he got an idea he wrote a letter to the radio station he told the radio station would you kindly play for me midro c sound on radio then I'll tune my instrument. And the radio station thought, this is a very good idea. I mean, it's fun. In any case, I think our radio will be very famous. So they ran an announcement. Mr. So-and-so, we got you a letter. We're going to play for you, Midro C Sound, on this particular day, at this particular time, and we'll give you five minutes. You can tune your instrument. And so the day came. The old man sat under his tree, waiting for this midro C sound. Because I hear, if you have the C sound, then you can tune D, E, F, and so forth. Oh, wow. In two, three minutes, Mr. So-and-so, we're going to play for you C sound. Countdown. Bang. And finally, the man was ready. And he was able to hear the C sound, midro C sound, and he tuned his guitar, I mean his instrument. Uh, and the writer of the story said, that's it. If you get the midro sound, and that midro C sound is Christ, you can tune your finances and your fiancé. <laughs> you can tune all the other keys because the midro C sound is in place. I pray right now the anointing for migration from self-centeredness to Christ has begun to happen. Before the next beasts uh, migrate in uh, Masai Mara, you will have migrated. You cannot be defeated by beasts. Neither can they move faster than you. Somebody say amen. amen. So if we simply die to ourselves and accept the life of Christ, you know, the life of someone else who is Christ, then we'll be able to serve other people. So, uh, this is very great call in scripture, the call for servanthood. Jesus talked about it in Mark chapter 10, verse 43. 
the gospel, Mark 43, I mean, chapter 10, he said, just three verses. Uh, Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to be great among you, what should we do? It should be your servant. So if you want to be a great leader, what should you do? Serve. That's why I told you servanthood and service is the entry into leadership, if you like, entry into greatness. And the Bible continues to say, and whoever uh, of you desires to be fast shall be the slave of all. Wow. You want to be number one? Agree to be a slave. That's even interesting. And for even the son of man did not come to be served. This is Jesus. What did he come to do? He came to serve and to give his life uh, a ransom for many. Christianity is the only way of life that we never live for ourselves. We always live for somebody else. Jesus died for us all. So the Son of Man did not come to serve, but to be served. The word serve there is the word diakonia in Greek. It is a word for deacon. What is the work of a deacon? Working in practical ways to make it easier for those who teach and preach. So they serve in practical ways in the house of God through the gift and the ministry of service. Jesus was a deacon. He took the position of a deacon. Another day he decided to wash the disciples' feet in John chapter 13. And as he was washing their feet, Peter is protesting. saying, I haven't seen it in this version. You can't wash my feet. You can't do, touch my feet. Jesus, what are you doing? You are a boss. What are you doing? But Jesus took a, you know, a water, basin, basin of water and guarded himself with a towel, began to wash the feet. And Peter protested. He was told, Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you're not part of me. Uh, you, are you listening, Peter? You are not part of this. You are not part of this move of God. If I don't wash your feet. Oh, Peter said, oh my God. Wash my, my feet, even my head. Yeah, because that's where the problem was. The head. Mm. So, service and servanthood is a very major matter in the body of Christ. And I pray, uh, you know, younger people, that you pick this very strongly. Because why... Uh, I do the things I do because the heart of service is part of my principle of life. And I tell you the truth, I go to the extreme end, but I believe the reward is great in heaven. The number of people impacted by the ministry I do, I'm sure are many, and only eternity can tell. Because, you see, this week and a couple of weeks, we've been on a journey, we've been from Western, coming, coming, coming. You know, even when I posted your pictures this morning, We still said we are now going, we are on our way, but we are going near Nairobi. I even didn't say we are going to Nairobi. We said we are just going near Nairobi. We are still serving, serving humanity. Glory to God. There are four directions to servanthood. Four directions of servanthood that I want to share with you. Number one is serving God. The first direction of servanthood is serving God. Somebody say serving God. Serving God is his will, not ours. He desires that we serve him. Praise God. He desires that we serve him. You know, there's a very strange story in the scriptures about uh, this matter of service. And there's instructions in the book of Exodus that is very interesting in chapter 21 of the book of Exodus. If we if we can go and pick it up from the Old Testament, uh, we have the law concerning servants in the book of Exodus from, you know, verse 1, if we can try to read quickly. Now, these are the judgments which you shall set before them from verse 1. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he shall serve six years. And in the seventh year, he shall go free and pay nothing. If he comes in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he comes in married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master has given him a wife, she was, and, and she was born, she has borne him sons or daughters, the wife and the children shall be her masters. And he shall go out by himself. But if the servant plainly says, 
I love my master and my wife and my children. I do not, uh, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him to the judges. And he shall also bring him, <laughs> look at this, to the door or to the doorpost. And his master shall pierce his ear with an oar and he shall serve him forever. Okay, I need to explain this. So here is a servant. These are regulations that God gave Israel. You have a Hebrew uh, slave and so forth. So if he came with his wife when he came to serve, then he shall go with them. But in case when he came, he was a single young man. Then you gave him a wife. Then he's born children. Hebrews believe they are women. The woman, the Hebraic woman, remains a Hebrew. That's why Jesus was born of Mary, not Joseph. Because of that matter. In fact, even today when they are trying to check whether you're Hebrew, they check whether your mother was a, a Jewish mother. Uh, if your father was a Jew, but a woman was not a Jew, uh, you're still not a Jew. So, here she, this servant is, he has now a wife and children, a, a Jewish woman. Uh, if he has to go, he has to leave the Jewish woman and the children. But then if he says, no, I love my master, I also love you know, my wife and my children, I don't want to leave them. Then what will happen is, he has to be nailed on the door. In other words, he is. He, he, and it's the choice is yours. You have to decide. You say, because of the love I have, I would rather serve my master because I love him so much and I love my family. I'm going to serve. So they will nail him on the door. Declaring from now onwards, I'm no longer a slave. I'm free because I finished my years. But now I'm serving willingly. I'm no longer a slave. Our ear is already nailed to the door that from now on we shall serve as the slaves of Christ. This is a new freedom we have in Christ to serve him. But you know, some of you, we have to check your ear. Uh, we check the ear of your friend. Tell me, come on, Shimo. Evidence. <laughs> no, you should have been checking the spiritual ear. You know this, 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 this physical ear. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many of you want to be nailed on the door? Christ to the door. That now you're going to be a slave. Do you remember John the Baptist saying in Matthew 3, 11, that a mightier than I is coming whose sandals I cannot bear, I cannot touch, I cannot lose his sandals. The work of losing and tying shoes was for slaves. John the Baptist regarding Christ is saying, I'm below a slave. I'm not even allowed to touch his shoes. Servanthood is a way to go as an entry to leadership. So, the first direction is that we serve God. Number two, we serve leaders. Serving men and women of God is another direction of servanthood. Mm, I thought we only serve God. No, we also serve our leaders. Philippians chapter 2 verse 22, Paul gives a testimony of Timothy and he says powerful things about Timothy. In Philippians 2 22 he says, but you know uh, in fact, let's just read a little bit from maybe verse 20 uh, about Timothy. It's amazing testimony. For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. You know, he's telling Philippians, Timothy is the only one who, who has a sincere care. The others are not sincere. Huh? Verse 21, for all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. Even in the church, this leadership meeting, there are people who are very good members of this church, uh, and they are supposed to be leaders. They're supposed to be here. But I'm sure Nakimzana and Maindi will go, you know. So other things were more important than this one. Uh, you know, so we are praying that they will be adjusted by the word of God. And they nail their ear. So ushers, you should have a nyundo na mesumari kwa mulango. Uh, umeka apo kwa offering 
you know, you know, in Pakistan, kwa, kwa store, it's not just the offering bag. There is also AK-47s, you know, uh, for, for the operation. So here in Jetra, tuleka nyundo na mesumari na skurus because we are looking for people to nail at the door. Did you get the joke? Ama badu jashikanisha? Mungu wa Verse 22. But you know his proven character that is a son with his father. He served with me in the gospel. I tell you what, somebody must serve their leaders. Timothy was serving Paul. Listen. Timothy served Paul. Joshua served Moses. Elisha served Elijah. David served Saul. A very difficult leader to serve. So, King Saul was a very difficult. Kumichezea tiu music, ili depression itoke. Arafa na tupa mushale, mukuki. Can you imagine serving a guy who is likely to spear you anytime? Muna subuka na ule, ule mutu ya matuta. We had any afadhali. Saul was at another level. Sindio? You know one bishop, I hear, called that man and told him, Najwa yu ni vile ulikuwa courageous, ata sisi we are suffering, our co-leaders are also messing us up. Ni vile atunge kuwa tumenini, tunge ongea the same way. <coughs> okay. Iyo si inui sauti. Siku moja si uzushe, man of God, susha. Rashida <laughs> hapa. Unaambia mkuja practice ya kwaya hamukuji. Unaambia mfanya nini hamukutani. Ukiwa kwa committee you are always absent with apology. <clears throat> Even sometimes without an apology. Tutanyoa wewe siku moja. Siku moja maana God atakuja hapa mira notebook. Aseme leo ni leo msema kesho ni ule ngwata Francis hata kama ali ali retire. Alafu ali release. <laughs> Help serve your leader to fulfill the larger vision of the ministry. And how will you do that? By service. Praise God. So that's the second direction for leaders, for servanthood. We serve our leaders. Mutakubali. In fact, every week or every month, you should ask yourself, this month, is there something specific I've done to help Pastor Charles? Maybe I should text him or call him and ask him, is there something you'd want me to do this month? Just something, you know. Maybe he's here and he remembers there are things he needs in Rongai. But you can say, send me to Rungai. I'll pick those things for you, bring them here to Injaton. You know, and ensure that you don't need to struggle. Find a practical thing you can do to serve your leader. That's how to serve, to serve God. Number three, we have another direction. We serve one another. We serve who? We serve one another. John 13 talks about the washing of the feet. And Jesus commanded that the disciples need to keep washing each other's feet. Praise God. Amen. We have been called to liberty. We have been called to a great, great liberty that... Um, the liberty we have been called into does not mean that we don't serve. We must be able to serve each other. Um, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. There's a, a scripture that just jumped into my spirit, and I'm just trying to look for it. Um, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Galatians 5, verse 13. What does it say? For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. But what should you do? But through love, do what? Serve one another. So the scripture calls us to serve one another. Are we together? 
we are serving God, we're serving our leaders, but it's also amazing we have been called to serve one another. And Jesus commanded his disciples to wash each other's disciples' feet to do likewise. Number four direction for service is serving all. Somebody say serving all. Because serving is the highest level of meaningfulness for anyone's life. I tell you, when people don't have anything to do, they get so messy. You know, have you heard jobless people saying, oh, I have nothing to do, he said, you know, it's really a struggle if somebody doesn't have something to do. Whereas you consider, don't you know that that work may be so burdening that you really want to move <laughs> out of it? Yet, when you don't have work, you're really complaining and having a lot of trouble. Why? Because service of any kind brings meaningfulness in life. Are we together? And so, whether you've been appointed to do this or that, or you do not have any appointment, remember, you still can serve all people. Praise the Lord. One of the signs of maturity, when you come to the house of God, don't just come to be blessed. Also come to be a blessing. Don't just come to to check whether this church has love. So you sit at the corner saying, let me see whether somebody will greet me today just to see whether this church has enough love. No, no, why don't you do it the other way? Come and greet everybody. Come on. Serve people, smile at them, appreciate them, ask them how are things getting on with you? Is everything okay? Is there something I can be praying for you this week? Without any strings attached. Some of you are so suspicious if somebody asks you a personal question when I've created an agutafuta. No, he's just, he's, he's just come from the leadership seminar and he has had a new point, serve all people. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, 19, he said, for though I am free from all men, 1 Corinthians 9, 19, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win the more. Praise God. Paul made a decision. I am going to serve all. Amen. You see, I would stay in Life Church International and do all the ministry. I think the things that need to be done there are major. Lunch hours every day, morning glories every day, evening services in maybe three, four days in a week. Uh, but I abandon all those just to serve the body of Christ out there. Like now, where have I been? I'm in the ministries and churches and places I've ministered and taught. Uh, you ask, what, what, is, what are you looking for, David Juma? What's your problem? Why don't you just stay at home? And just help your people. You know, that's where you have an assignment. But you know, my calling is not of a pastor, per se. Um, not a per se, per se. My calling uh, is in the apostolic. In the apostolic. And a, an apostle is a gift to the body. Not just to one section of the body, but to the greater body of Christ. Amen? And I have grace for it. I mean, being away from your family for weeks and weeks is not easy. You know, you don't see your children. I have two, two uh, you know, I have three beautiful girls in my house. I live in a girl's dormitory. <laughs> Do you understand what that means? <laughs> so, I mean, <clears throat> I miss them. They miss me too. My daughter was asking me, so when are you coming? <clears throat> I said, it's Saturday. In the morning or in the evening, I didn't answer. Because I'm not sure what time will arrive. Are we together? So, um, is a decision you make that because of the anointing, gifts and calling and assignment and you said yes. Me, I was jailed for life by Jesus without an option of a fine. I'm a slave of Jesus Christ. Without even off. We get off once in a while and leave. Huh? It's amazing. But I, because I was nailed, my year was, it has a sign. If I can tell you, 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 I can example. We, <laughs> we were in Masai the other day, and Maura is one of the best photographers we have in Kenya. 
And I told him how to take pictures. So he took the head of this Maasai guy and I, I could see the ear. Oh, I, I, sh- I should show you that picture. You know, the ear, it was so beautiful. Until an American friend of mine said, oh, you're preaching to the Maasai. You know, it was amazing ear. My grandfather and grandmother used to have that ear with a big hole. You know, you could put two, three fingers, you know, and, and hang. As little boys were hanging. I don't know why, ladies, that's the most beautiful thing. Why can't you do that? It will be sensational. You are teaching you beauty now, Rafa, and Shikanisha and Shikanisha. So, anyway, <clears throat> let's look at qualities of servanthood because a servant must have certain qualities. And this one, we're going to read a text in Genesis 24. Very amazing text, Genesis 24. Here there's a guy who was sent to look for a wife. This chapter is read during wedding negotiations, marriage negotiations in homes when they travel to negotiate. I don't know why people must negotiate for you. Um, You know, one time we were trying to deal with a certain family in a certain negotiation. (laughs) And they were saying, oh, mutatoa hiki na hiki. Tukasema mapana, iyo chapter muna quote ya Genesis 24. Mwenye alikuwa nakuja kuchukua, di aliamua tapeana nini. Sio mwenye alikuwa baba ya mtoto, alikuwa nasema, anatoa list. So tukambio mama, umesquote scripture. Na kwa sababu ya hiyo, sisi ndiyo tutasema kinyo tatoa. Sio wewe. Hapo tukashinda. Because ulitumia Bible, na sisi ni man of God, na tunajua Bible. So mama kakua erambast, if not embarrassed. So, uh, so Isaac needed a wife. The father sent the servant. And uh, if you read from verse 10, the servant took 10 of his master's camels and departed for, uh, for all his master's goods were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia, the city of Naho. And uh, he made his camels kneel down outside the city by a well of water at the evening. Uh, time and the time when women go out to draw water and he said oh lord <clears throat> give god of my master abraham please give me success this day and show kindness to your master abraham behold here i stand by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water now let it be that the young woman to whom i say please let down your pitcher that i may drink and she says Drink, and I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. And by this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. And it happened, before she had finished speaking, that behold, Rebecca, who was born of Bethuel, son of Milcar, son of wife of Naho, Abraham's brother, came out with a picture on her shoulder. Now, the young woman was very beautiful to behold. Okay, a virgin. No man had known her. And she went down to the well, filled her pitcher, came up. Gone to the well, filled her pitcher, came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, please, let me drink a little water from your pitcher. And she said, drink, my Lord. She's even calling him, sir, my Lord. Then she quickly, at quickly, let her pitcher down to, uh, to her left hand, I mean to, to her hand, and gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they are finished drinking. Camels, how much does a camel drink? And she want to give all of them water. Then she quickly emptied her pitcher. You mean quickly? In the trough, ran back. She's running to the well to draw water and drew all, I mean for all his camels. And the man wandering at her remained silent so as to know whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. So it was when the camels had finished drinking and the men took a golden nose ring weighing half a shekel. Your nose it ajua. You know another weight and two bracelets for her wrists weighing ten shekels of gold. And she said, whose daughter are you? Tell me please if there's room in your father's home for us to lodge. And she said, I am the daughter of Bethro, Mika's son, whom she bought to Naho. Moreover, she said, we both have straw and f- feed enough and room to lodge. And the man bowed down on his head and worshipped the Lord. He said, blessed be the God 
of my master Abraham who has not forsaken his mercy and his tool towards my master. As for me, being on the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. So the young woman ran and told her mother, Sir household, these things, and so forth and so forth and so forth. You can read the rest of the story because you are enjoying it. That's how to be married. It's very simple. Through service, my sister, And my brother, through service, being sent, agreeing to be sent. Now, from this story, we shall pick some things. Because I think I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm also trying to help this generation. And I'm also trying to teach on leadership. Servanthood number one is willingness. 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 This girl was... Willing. Rebecca offered to get the man water and even water his animals. And she even didn't know what was coming soon after that. She didn't know that it was a trick. It, she didn't know it was a test. She did it from the heart. And really, watering many camels like that from a deep well was an unusual service to a stranger. Can you imagine that? Why? She had a willing heart. She had a willing heart. I pray that you guys will have willing hearts because this is one of the characteristics of servanthood. And a willing heart, how is that heart like? Three things. It is a heart which is impelled rather than compelled. In other words, it is impelled rather than compelled. Secondly, it is agreeable, not disagreeable. That's a willing heart. It's agreeable. She agreed to help the man, not disagreeable. It is executing, not excusing. A willing heart is executing, not excusing. I pray that you'll be willing. Somebody say, I will be willing. Secondly, another characteristic is servanthood excels. Somebody say, it excels. This woman did give water to the camels and to this man, and especially to the camels, until, the Bible says, until they had finished drinking. In other words, she did it excellently well, like she was willing her heart. She decided at Afanya, Mpaka, the camels will drink and they finished drinking. In other words, when you have a heart of servanthood, you will excel in your work. A true servant heart cannot do a job badly. That's what I'm saying. You can't do a job badly. Huh? Such a person takes pride in doing in what they do, you take pride in what you do, always doing the best. To an extent, if even wanting to surprise the person that you are serving, you really want to excel. So you need to ask yourself this question. Are people surprised by what you do for them? Are they thankful? Do you bless them by your service? Is the man of God happy that you served, you excelled, you did excellently what you are supposed to do, servanthood excels. There's no mediocrity. Do you agree? Tell your neighbor you should do your jobs well every time. Thirdly, servanthood is swift. It's swift. True servants get the job done swiftly. I read a statement by a man called Phil. He's a man of God from Australia, Phil. In one of his books on, I think, leadership excellence or something like that, I can't remember the actual title. He said, the slow service is a curse worse than no service at all. Slow what? Slow service is a curse worse than no service at all. Don't be slow. Have some divine speed in doing what you need to do. 
here the Bible says, she said, drink my Lord when he asked for water. Then she quickly let her pitcher. Do you see the word quickly? And then she emptied the pitcher on the staff. Quickly she did it. She had some speed. A servant always serves, not just when it is convenient. They do it with speed. If there's stuff that need to be done in this church and you are responsible, you do it with speed and it will please the Lord. It's a good characteristic. And number four, servanthood is honoring. It's honoring. Servanthood honors rather than despises those it serves. The question of honor is important. Rebecca addressed the stranger as sir. She said, drink my Lord. That's honor. She treated the stranger with respect. Huh? There's a story, another story, yeah? Story moja. I was an usher in a certain church. Who knows that ushering is one of those most difficult, most, of, most difficult works in the church? Because it's very hard to show believers where to sit. Because kila mtu wako nakitia, ila napenda kufanya nini? So there's a Asha, anajaribu kuonyesha watu mahali kukaa, wanaleta shida. Brethren, in the name of the Lord, wanaleta nini? The lady got worked up. The Asha got worked up. Alishika huyo mtu shingo, alishika huyo msichana shingo. I think she went overboard. Uh, she should have honored that person. And the one on Ashikwa Shingo should have honored this stranger, Asha, and agree. Tell your neighbor next time, the test will be on you. <laughs> so in the church, don't just be anxious for position. And finding when we, the man of God, remember me. Rather, find it easy to serve. Serve regardless. That's the attitude of Christ. And I tell you what is honor. You see, one of the things you need to know, we honor leaders not just by telling them, oh, I honor you, or bowing kidogo, ukiwa honor. Uh-uh. We honor them by serving. Are we together? We honor them by serving. So whether we are serving God, we honor him by serving. Whether we are honoring our leaders, we honor them by serving. Whether we are honoring Others, we honor them by serving them. Find something you can do because servanthood is the entry point to leadership. You will accumulate spiritual bonga points. That one day, bang, they will open doors for you and you will be amazed. People will be asking, what is your secret? There's no secret. I have just been serving and I continue to serve. Number five, characteristic, servanthood is work, is work, is work. The servant is always looking forward to finish the job, however long it takes, which actually overrides his comfort, his own comfort. It's work. In other words, you're always looking forward to finish the job. Nehemiah finished the job in 52 days. Finish the job, finish the job. It's work, you will sweat. It's extensive, but do it, finish it. This woman gave those camels water until they finished. How much, you guys are in the agricultural sector, how much, or your neighbors, how much water does a camel drink or would drink? How many liters? 20 liters, one camel. And this servant must have had several camels. So 20 liters, and she was going to the well. There was no technology. This woman worked, my friend. That is work. There is work. I think And number six, servanthood is unselfish. A servant has other people's interest at heart. is unselfish. You should have 
other people's interests at work. That's what Paul said of Timothy, that all seek their own, not the things of Jesus Christ, but Timothy is like-minded, he was sincerely care. We read this in Philippians 2, verse 21 and 22. He was sincerely care for your state. And in the New Testament, we see men of God abounding, growing in service. They discovered the spirit of servanthood. And these men had great impact. No wonder they are mentioned in the Bible. They are, they are, they are great men. One of them is a man called Epaphrodite. Ephaphroditus, who risked his own life. Um, that reminds me of something. There's a book I did in the year 2000, a long time ago. The book was called How to Begin in Ministry. And I lost, uh, I mean, they got finished and whatever, so I'm rewriting it. Uh, so that we can bring it to this generation. And there's a man I met in Desta University in the 90s. He was called Alan Taylor, and he became my friend. He was teaching us in a, 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 a one-week course, a short course, and he wrote me an article which we agreed, or uh, quoted it in my book, and his article was interesting. Uh, he listed biblical men and women who served with the poor in his apostolic missionary journeys. Have you heard people like this? Let me read you that. Stephanus, Fortunatus, Titus, Lucas, Achaicus, Aquilas, Priscilla, Tychicus, Philemon, Sosthenes, Sospatas, Aristarchus, Secadas, these are good names for your children, Trophimus, <laughs> Timothy, Onesphorus, Mark, Atemas, Zenas, Zenas was a lawyer, Epaphroditus, Archippus, Phoebe, Cyrus, Ephametus, Urbanus, Mary, Luke, Ones Onesmus, uh, this one stole, uh, Epaphras, Erastus, Gaius. Now, these served with him in various capacities. And listen, this is how they served God through serving Paul. Here are some of the things they did. One hosted Paul. Just that. Another one had a great love for a congregation. Another one prayed for them. Another one ministered to Paul. Another one was like a brother to him. Another one witnessed and preached with Paul to groups. Another one sang with him in prison. You remember the guy who sang with him in prison? Another one was beaten and persecuted with him. Another one confirmed new believers with Paul. Another one exercised gifts as a prophet. Another one exhorted an assembly. Another one risked his life for Paul. Another one was a chief man among many. Another one considered worthy among the saints. Served as a courier of necessary items for Paul. Another one, profitable to Paul in his ministry. Refreshed him, another one. Had deep faith and a ministerial gift. Another, an exemplary believer. Taught correct doctrine to new believers. Reported on status of believers in other locations. Uh, was an emissary of Paul. Served with Paul like a son in the gospel. Like-minded, concerned for new believers with him. Reminded new believers of Paul's ways and teachings. Obedient to the truth. Partner. Mm was refreshing to the congregations, loved the fellow believers, shared the faith, a fellow servant, passed on news about other ministries, like a brother, carried a letter from Paul to a church, traveled with Paul, hosted a church in his own home that Paul had planted, convinced the Jews that Jesus was Christ, helped another of Paul's epistles to better understand the gospel truth, stayed behind to help new converts, made tents with Paul, fellow laborer in the ministry, encouraged others to do good works, taught others, appointed elders, strengthened believers, comforted Paul, co-wrote with Paul a letter to a church, ministered to new believers. All these guys, each one of them did any of these little things. What are you doing? Or oh, you are just a silent listener to everything that happens in this church? Wow, 
I think this book should be back. How many of you are saying this book should be back? Next time I come to preach here, I'll have a copy. I'll have copies, they'll be there. Lord, help me for making a promise. Lord, it's dangerous to make a promise which you can't fulfill if something. Let's look at Ephaphroditus. Epha who? Mama Epha. This is a good, it's a good name. Philippians 2, verse 25. After we finish talking about Timothy, there is a Fafreditus. Yet I considered it necessary to send to you who? If a Fafreditus. Look at the different uh, descriptions and titles, if you like, he's given. My brother, fellow worker, fellow soldier, messenger, minister. Those are five titles. One, he was a brother, meaning they had the same father or sister, if you like. Secondly, he was fellow worker. That means he was not a consumer Christian, but a producer Christian. <laughs> they were working together. He was fellow soldier, meaning he fought the good fights of faith, fight of faith with Paul. He was a messenger. That means he was trusted to carry gifts. Or actually here it was offering. He was supposed to carry offering to others where he was sent to take that money. And of course, fifthly, he ministered to others for impact and transformation. Are we together? I've rushed that Ephaphroditus guy. Lakini is vitu tano si uwe nazo. First of all, if you are saved, then you are brother, you are sister. Sindio? But now become a fellow worker. We are working together in this GOC Egypt. Praise God. Or wherever you come from. Amen? Fellow soldier. That means there are some battles we shall fight together. When we are attacked, we shall stick together. If there is trouble, we don't run away. We are fellow soldiers. Your messenger, you can be sent and bring back a good report like Caleb and Joshua. And then you minister to the needs of Paul. Because let me tell you, pastors and leaders have needs. Another time I was teaching intercessors how to pray for a man of God. That was the topic. Let me tell you, this man is anointed already. Don't pray, Father, give him anointing. You don't need to worry about anointing. Let me tell you the things you need to pray for. Father, give him money. Because that way he will sort his family and then the, and the, the anointing will have, not have a problem flowing when he goes. But if he in his congosity is still thinking, Nanikitoka hapa, Auctioneer na ningojea. Nimetumiwa ata barua ya auctioneer iko kwa WhatsApp. Na nijaribu kuchoma. Natakuwa nachoma vitu ngapi? Anachoma auctioneer na anajaribu kuchoma leo wewe. So the prayers should direct on the peripheral issues that affect a man of God. Si mungu sema amen ama kitu kama hiyo. Si ndio? Also pray for his family because family is important. In fact in divine protocols, family comes second to God. Ministry comes third. Family first. Pray for his family. Huh? Pray for his wife. Because the end ya nangukia kwa na muti. Man of God akisikia heaven imesema, ye end ya nambia kwa kwanza. Kambla ujambiwa. Sindio? Yeah. And sometimes being a pastor's wife is very dangerous because utazungushwa Mungu alisema hiki Mungu alisema hiki pesa inaenda huko tunafanya hivi tunanua hiki tunafanya hiki tunafanya hiki kasi yake ni kukuja tu hata by faith tu aki nini akikubali tu na sasa mnakataa saa zingine ya one month because it's okay and then bado unakubali you know it's not easy ha huh? you who are trying to marry preachers be very careful I know when you look at them, they have glory, clout, power, influence. They look like they have money indeed. Some have money because if you have Christ, you have money. But it's a calling. 
is a what? Calling. If you're not called, don't try that. But it's the best calling because you will serve the Lord anyway. All your days. Imagine how me. So, praise God. Sorry, I was counseling you in public. It's not good manners. I mean, I was talking generally. <laughs> Amen. How many of you agree you are going to take on servanthood as an entry into leadership? Do you get that point? Amen. Glory to God. The only thing I can do, I'll give you um, Jesus. Because he talked about next level. Chakula kiwa mzuri sunaungezeaga. Recently, I was seated in a restaurant somewhere in, the, in, the, in, in Nairobi, taking coffee, waiting to go to a meeting for leaders to minister in the leadership. And I was taking coffee because I sometimes, I, I never used to take coffee, sometimes I take coffee to keep the head open. So, and then I had my iPad and I was, I was alone. And I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, Sinaza kuandika kakitu, nikaeka iPad on, then nika, nika sema. Inexperienced leaders, what wisdom can I give them? So nikaanza kuandika. So I came up with this list. Twelve basics to leadership development. Young, inexperienced leaders in a growing church, they need these 12 basics. For leadership or to leadership development. One, so I'm, not, I'm just going to give you an outline. Since our as a person, number one, understand your divine connections and embrace them. Embrace them. Understand your divine connections and embrace them. In other words, here you are in the ministry. What connections are in place? What divine connections are in place? Don't play around with them. Embrace them. Number two, decide to follow your God passionately. In matters, God, follow him passionately. With all your soul, with all your heart, with all your strength, follow God passionately. Number three, imitate your leader <clears throat> through submission as he imitates Christ. In other words, follow your leader or imitate your leader through submission as he imitates Christ. There are two things there. Yes, you are following your leader as he follows Christ. If your leader is not following Christ, don't follow him, but follow one who is following Christ. But you do it through submission. Somebody says submission. Number four, know your calling, gifts, and purpose. Know your calling, gifts, and purpose, and grow them. So grow in your calling. Grow your gifts, and grow in your purpose. Number five, as a young leader, develop godly character because this is your greatest asset. Develop a godly character because this is your greatest asset. For instance, grow in the fear of God. In matters, fear of God, grow in those areas. Number six, be committed and faithful. Be committed and be faithful to God and to the leader, matters commitment and faithfulness. We need to be committed to God, but also to our leaders. Our commitment and our faithfulness should be to God and to our leaders. Number seven, understand the vision of your ministry and pray it through as you serve therein. Understand the vision of your ministry. And then Pray to through. In other words, you must be one who prays for the vision of your ministry. 
and then serve therein. We've talked about service. So understand the vision of your ministry. If I post there, I would probably ask, what is the vision of this church? Unfortunately, if I ask that, you all look on, the, on your right to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Maybe I should ask you, your statement, make ready a people prepared for the Lord, where is it in the Bible? Anybody who, or you don't know it's in the Bible? Where is it in the Bible? Okay, so you don't know the vision of your church. If you don't know where that verse is, that's your homework. Go into the Bible. Thank God he did not put the verse. Because the others here, commitment, he has put the verses. But that one, he, he has not put the verse. I know the verse. And some of you know it, but some of you do not know. So homework for today is what? So write down, use your Google or whatever, search, uh, make ready a people prepared for the Lord. In fact, if you type it that way, it will show up. Kuna mtu atafanya hivyo? Nani angependa kujaribu? Tafuta saa hii otherwise hii semina haiendelei. You must know the vision of your ministry then you pray it through and ensure you serve therein. Make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Where is it? Anybody who found it? You got it, my sister. Where? Luke 1 17. She got an A. Glory to God. I discovered you are my friend on Facebook. God bless you. Don't block me. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> Luke 1 17. Are we together? I discovered not many people know the vision of their house. We are not just here beating about the bush. There must be a direction, a leadership direction that we have in the house, and you need to know it. Number eight. This is another basic. Don't be a hiring in your ministry. You know a hiring? Be a son of God stroke son of man. Don't be a hiring in your ministry, but rather be a son of God and son of man. What does that mean? Of course, everybody must be son of God. Saved, blessed, washed by the blood of Christ. You have a commitment in your salvation. But together with that, you're also son of the leader in the house. You're son of man. Don't be just a hiring. You know, I know that is loaded because there are some people can't do anything in church unless they are paid. Of course, full-time staff should be uh, taken care of, and that's a system as the church grows, you can do that. But your focus should not be what you get from the church. Okay? Although the church does not muscle the ox, we know how to take care of the ox. Because it was a serious accusation. Number nine. Amani wachi hapo. Learn to sacrifice your life and your resources. As a young leader, learn to sacrifice your life. Be poured out. Spend and be spent for the gospel and your resources. Number ten. Grow through the conflicts and offenses in the ministry. Grow through the conflicts and offenses in ministry. I tell you, there are conflicts that show up in ministry. Sometimes you can be offended, but grow. Amen. Grow through them. Not all conflicts are bad. They help you grow. There will be offenses, but do not be offended all the time. Number 11, endeavor and work for the unity of your team. Work for the unity of your team. Ensure there is unity. Don't be the one causing division. Don't be the one causing trouble in the committees. Always endeavor or work for the unity of your team. It's always important. And finally, study to show 
yourself approved of God. Study. In other words, keep learning. Engage a learning attitude. Keep studying. Keep reading. The question you should be asking yourself is, what book am I reading now? What am I hearing in this season? Am I studying and reading something? Am I trying to learn something new? Because a leader will be better as a reader. Wow. Now, do you see those 12 points? By David Juma. Because uh, I don't want you to publish them. Those ones don't publish them because they are being manufactured into something, okay? But you are permitted to preach them and talk about them. But don't sell them. <laughs> are we together? So, mumebarikiwa. Mkuna kitu mumeshikanisha? Nimewapea kalikira mapo 12 things. But man of God, you can teach all of the 12. For you, you are permitted to do whatever you want. You can dub, you can copy, you can sell, you can do whatever you want to do with them. Hallelujah. So, I want to pray for you at this point. And then there will be another session that I just want to close my session with prayer for you. And just ask God that he's going to help you to enter into deeper levels of leadership. Are we together? And what is the greatest entry point to leadership? Servanthood. Find something you can do today. Amen. And that will be a blessing. Just stretch your hand as you pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of God here in this house. Father God, we exhort you and glorify your name. I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, for these young people and older people, we've taught these principles and the word of God. I pray that you bless them in Jesus' name. I pray that these things we've taught and spoken, Lord, just some in just an outline form, may you release them in their spirits in a very special way. Above all, Lord, give us this heart and willingness and the attitude of service. May these rise as servants of God. I pray, my God, that your people will rise. That this church, actually, they'll be like almost uh, push and pull. Lord, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? I want to do something. I want to do something. I want to make a difference. I want to assist here. I want to do this and that. Father, and as they do it, they do it as unto the Lord. I included, Father, we give you our worship. We give you our service. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.